Hey guys, so I'm here and um, I have a feeling that the weekly freebies are almost to an end because however I'm getting a, a few things here and there, it's just a few things here and there. Um, I truly honestly, um, well I'll give you an update. Let me just show you the couple things too that I got and then um, I'll do an update. So I'm, I'm anticipating that my future videos on Saturdays will probably be like vlog style, talking, update, or whatever. So if you have any questions or anything, go ahead and leave them in the comments so that next week I can chit chat about whatever else is there in the comments. So you can do that or you can send me a message anywhere that you guys communicate with me and we can do that because um, the first part of the video is probably gonna be like a whole five minutes, if that. Anyway, so let me show you the two things that I got in the mail. All right, the first items are these two items right here. This came from, um, I guess Remington has like a, 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 I don't know what you wanna call it. It's like a place where you can go, you answer surveys and you participate and all that kind of stuff. And they have trials. So I was able to join in and get invited to do a trial on these two curling ones. It doesn't come in a box, it just comes like this. I mean, it comes in a box, obviously, but it doesn't come in the box that whatever these ones are supposed to be packaged like. So I did try it out. I used one on one side of my head. I think I used this one on this side and this one on the other. They look almost identical. They're slightly, slightly different from the texture on the ones. So, um, I don't know. I did it like really, really quickly. Like this one was like the first piece. <laughs> I was just like, let me just try it out real quick. Do it real quick and see what I think about it. So anyway, so that's that. And that I did that earlier this morning. So my hair doesn't really hold curls all that well, obviously, you could tell. But um, it's okay, I guess. You know, whatever. So that's that. And the other one is just this money maze. It comes like in this little question mark box like this and when you open it it's just a little tiny fun little toy and this top opens when you get the little ball all the way to the top then you can open it up and get whatever is inside you can put whatever you want inside here money I guess for preferably so those are the only two items that I got this week all right so um, if that's all you care about, then uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you maybe next week if I have something, if I've, if I've claimed anything. And if you want to keep watching, then you can hear me babble on about whatever. All right. So as for review items, obviously I had already mentioned that I wasn't probably, well, I probably wasn't going to be getting anything, but you know, there's a few random things here and there. Um, it's so windy outside and I'm in front of my sliding glass door in my room upstairs and the screen that is from the sliding glass door got ripped off the door. So every time a gust of wind comes by, it flings it against the, the balcony like, I don't know what you call it, um, railing I guess you want to call it, I don't know. Um, so it just threw it back onto the window, whatever, all right. So, uh, what was I saying? I forgot. <clears throat> oh yeah, so, you know, I'll choose some random things here and there, but probably won't be getting that many items anymore. I don't know. It, it's not easy. Um, so, update on school. All right, so this is gonna be what my, gonna, approaching my third week in. Um, last week I didn't really say anything because I didn't really have an opinion because that Monday, was there was no school. Um, so my schedule is kind of like um, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursdays, and I get home just after midnight. I wake up, go to work in the morning. I still have Monday through Friday, I work every single day. I get up at like 5.30 in the morning, get ready, and I'm by, at work around 7.30 or so. Um, and then after work, I go to school until school gets out around 11.30. And I'm home around midnight. So, and that's three days a week. I'm taking, I don't even know, what am I taking? I'm taking one, anatomy and physiology two, the class and the lab, microbiology, the lab, oral communications, and algebra, college algebra. So I'm taking five classes. <coughs> I'm still sick. I actually just got sick again. So uh, it's just been a lot of things going on and on and on for me.
Um, so I have yet to start anything with one of my classes, which is oral communication, because the first day the instructor wasn't there, then the next week there was no school. So this Monday is going to be my first real class with this person. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I don't really know. And then algebra, I only had it that first day also. I have those two classes on that day. Um, so far, it's been okay because, you know, I was doing algebra at home. Um, trying to do home study on algebra and it was impossible. I got to a certain point and I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing anymore. Like I could do the simple algebra equations and this and that and I was okay with that. But it started getting into like exponents and this and that and, and I was like, how am I going to memorize all these formulas when I do this test? I, you guys know me. If you guys have been following me for a while and if not, I'll let you know, I have the worst memory. So I'm having the time of my life right now. I have no memory whatsoever. So it's really, really difficult for me. Um, I mean, like, the instructor for like um, anatomy and physiology, I've had him twice already, and he's in the class and he just talks at you. It's like, blah, 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 blah. And that's what I hear. I mean, I hear it, but that's how it feels. It's just like, blah, 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 blah. I haven't been in a school setting since I was in high school. That was 22 years ago, people. 22 years. I haven't been in a school setting. I've done home studying here and there. Um, that's how I got my anatomy and physiology, my microbiology credits, and I did um, English composition. I did a couple other religions of the world, which they didn't count that in this school for nursing. That was the worst class ever, and ugh, they didn't include it. Um, and I did uh, one or two other classes at home, sociology and psychology, I think it was. Um, and I'm just like, I'm dumbfounded by the whole thing. So um, it's almost like, it's kind of like doing home study in a way. I mean, they just kind of give you like a guide. Um, one of them is like, um, my tests are not going to be based out of the book. It's going to be based on what I tell you. So. Like he gave some questions over the past couple of days on the computer and I couldn't find the answers in the book. I literally have to Google the answers, like the questions. I have to Google everything and search online for the correct answers. It's crazy. Um, so I bring a, a recorder with me to class, a voice recorder so that I can hear him talking and um, things that stick out even more like He'll ask certain questions and I'll write them down in class and then if I, if I miss it, I know I can go back to the voice recorder and go through and write it down again and I just kind of do it that way. I, I really don't know what I'm doing. I really don't. I'm a little bit nervous. Hi people. It's not easy. If you haven't, just, you know what? Tip number one, don't stop school. Don't take a break because if you take a break like me, my, I was like, oh, I got my, my LPN license. I got a real job. My, my um, high school friends that had gotten jobs were working as a CNA. And I happened to be working as an LPN. Um, but they continued on and went straight off to college after high school. I was like, Psh, I'm getting paid. I'm working a real job. I don't need to go back to school. I'm taking a break and then I'll go back later. And look, here it is, 22 years later, and I still haven't done it, so, and I'm doing it now. So I definitely suggest you just go straight out of high school and don't stop. Don't take a break like I did. That break will turn into, like, two months, three months, six months, one year, two years, etc. So, um, yeah, I always tell, like, we have students coming into my workplace all the time, and that is something that I always tell them. I'm like, please, guys, don't make the same mistake as I did go on and continue on with school and just get it over with and get it done with. Don't stop because it's the biggest mistake that you'll make. So anyway, so I was um, reading up on a couple of chapters in this book last night. I was doing some algebra work and not algebra, I was doing anatomy and physiology work and I was reading this and I read some interesting stuff and I figured, I thought it was really interesting because I didn't know and I'm not exactly sure where everybody is from that actually watches me because I know tons of people, if you're like me, when I watch YouTube videos, I rarely comment on videos. I'll like them here and there, uh, but I rarely, rarely comment on them. So, um, you know, I don't know who watches me or who's been watching me and where you're all from. I've asked that question in the past before and I've, and 
I don't remember. <laughs> I know there's a lot from the U.S. Um, and around the U.S., but if there's people from other countries, or maybe you're in the U.S. and you were originally from other countries. Anyway, besides the point. So anyway, I was reading this, this part here, um, the chapter, what chapter am I reading? Culture and Communication. If you knew this, these, I thought these were, I don't know, here, we're, we're talking, right? We're chatting. All right, listen to this. This is about um, people lacking knowledge of cultural differences. For instance, if you're like a, an American and you're going to, first example in the book, is you're going to Japan, right? Is it Japan? No. Um, no, Saudi Arabia. <coughs> That's the first one. So um, a lot of people like in the, you know, if you're traveling with the government or I guess or something like that, they give you like a lesson of what not to do when you get there based on um, like their cultural um, differences that we have. You know, like Americans are known to be very laid back and kind of like whatever and almost anything goes with U.S. Let me just read it. It says, <clears throat> it says, the soul of a shoe means nothing to observers in the United States or Europe. As a result, when visiting Saudi Arabia, Americans and Europeans delegates to a conference thought nothing about crossing their legs and pointing their shoes to shoes towards the speaker while listening to his presentation. The speaker, however, was horrified. In Muslim cultures, the gestures is perceived as insulting. Similarly, crossing your legs in the United States indicates you're relaxed, and in Korea, it's a social faux pas. I did not know that. Is that, I mean, obviously, it must be true. It must be true, right? It's in the book. But if you guys are from those countries, tell me, is that really true? Does it still stand today? Um, I'm just curious. Um, here's another one. A Taiwanese counterpart had difficulty establishing a working relationship with John's eye blinking rate. <laughs> um, because his eye blinking rate increased as he became more nervous, fearing that his efforts to resolve their misunderstanding had reached an impasse. The only thing, um, I'm sorry, the, this only made things worse. Blinking while another person talked is, um, talks is considered normal to North Americans. Um, to Taiwanese, it's considered impolite. I did not know that. I'm Thai, but I'm not Taiwanese. It's different, Taiwan and Thailand. So I, I had never heard that before. So I would find that very difficult to talk to somebody without blinking. <laughs> I mean... I've, I've always been taught, my father has always taught me, when you speak to somebody, you look at them dead in the eye and you hold their attention and you have a conversation. And that's how I've always been taught to do it. Um, that's my culture, the U.S. culture. My father is American, um, white American, so that is what he taught me when you communicate with people. When you shake somebody's hand, you don't shake their hand like this. You get a nice firm grip and you shake their hand. and. Um, it's just a sign of respect. So those are two things that I can think of that my father always um, jammed up into my head. He's even taught my children the same thing. You know, like when he greets them, he hugs them, but he also shakes hands with them to make sure that they have not forgotten how to shake hands. Um, because he thinks, you know, a weak handshake is kind of like a, show, a, a sign of like, not weakness, but like, kind of, I don't know what he says. It, it, I don't know. He just thinks that everybody should have a firm handshake, men and women. All right, here's another one. I think it's interesting. Tell me if you like this stuff or not. I mean, I guess I'll be able to tell by the views that the views are dropping like whatever. Anyway, let me know. Um, McDonald's fast food chain unintentionally offended thousands of Muslims when it printed an excerpt, excerpt um, from the Quran and, on its throwaway hamburger bags. Um, and they said that it was sacrilegious. So they're saying like, <gasps> gust of wind, it fell down. <laughs> All right, so they're saying uh, that if McDonald's had had more sensitivity and awareness to all these different um, cultures, I don't know what bag this was, but I don't know if it's something that had multiple, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, different religion things. Normally, I don't. I would think that they wouldn't have put anything from religion on their bag, but you know, whatever. Um, moving on to the next one. Let me see. Japanese view business cards as an extension of their person, handling them uh, of a person, handling them with great care, while Americans view them as a business formality, which that's true. 
um, and convenience. Consequently, Americans often end up insulting the Japanese by treating their business cards too casually. I didn't know that either. Um, yeah, we kind of think, you know, you toss out business cards like nothing. I mean, you keep your business cards in your purse, your wallet, your whatever, and when somebody needs something, you're like, oh, here's my card, here's my card, here's my card. You know, we're looking for people. Here, take my card. You know, we, we just do it that way. So. Okay, here's another one. Um, eye contact is also difference, uh, differences uh, across cultures. Americans place a high value on looking someone in the eye and tend to distrust anyone who failed to do so. The Japanese, in contrast, believe that eye contact over sustained periods shows disrespect. I didn't know that either. Among Asian cultures, too much eye contact is deemed intrusive. Arabs, on the other hand, maintain direct eye, eye contact for long periods of time. Um, so, you know, it's different all over. It's so weird. Like, when you meet people from different cultures, you don't know if you're going to offend them by doing something that you've always done or, you know, I don't know. I, I saw a YouTube video once when people were like, oh, okay, okay. And it means something completely foul in another country. I can't remember because, you know, I just can't remember because I don't remember stuff like that. I think it was like, like, and it, if you do like thumbs up, like, good job, good job. It means like up yours in another country. I, it's crazy. It's crazy that different sign gestures that we use as very casual as no big deal. It's very offensive to others. So if I just offended you, I'm so sorry with the thumbs up and the okay. I don't know what it means, but I'm sorry if I offended you. All right. Um, Arabs typically adopt a direct body orientation when communicating. Americans employ a stance that is somewhat less direct and thus often found in communication of Arabs aggressive and unnerving. Um, Arabs and South Americans also tend to gesture vigorously when speaking to others, causing less physical Americans to construe their behaviors as inappropriate and unmannerly. In a common in Middle Eastern cultures for both men and female to physically exaggerate um, responses while in the United States emotions are most more likely to be suppressed. In Japan, individuals may try to hide or mask certain emotions. It is most common in Asian cultures to exhibit uh, reserve and emotional restraint. And I know that's true because, you know, I'm of a mixed you know, I have American on one side, U.S. American, white American, and then I have the Asian on the other side. So my Thai family is not used to, I mean, I live in Miami, so we have like lots of touchy-feely. Everybody gives everybody kisses on the cheek all the time. It took me forever to get used to that um, because where I live now is different from where I grew up at. Um, it's just like 30 minutes south of where I live right now, 30, 45 minutes, but even that jump is culturally different for me. I mean, back in the day when I was in high school, you know, people didn't hug everybody to say hello and give them kisses on the cheek to say hello. That was not normal for me. But now that's just like normal. Any stranger coming and walking up to you, it's a given that you just say, oh, hello, and you give kisses on the cheek. Um, it's just, I, I don't know. It's so different. You don't know how to react to some people. Um, I see certain people um, in the hallways at work and they don't know how to react to me because sometimes I give them kisses on the cheek and sometimes I'm just like, hey, you know, I, I don't know what to do. Um, it's, it's just strange. I don't know. And like I was saying, in, in my family, uh, my mom was very loving and, and hugged us all the time and, and gave us kisses. She was very sweet and she was a wonderful woman. Um, and my dad too, you know, he always made sure to say I love you every night, um, gave you a hug when he saw you, or kiss you goodnight. You always had to make sure you gave a hug and a kiss goodnight because you never know what was going to happen, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so when the rest of my mom's Thai family came over from Thailand, um, they don't have, you don't touch people, it's different. So when I see them, my thing is to embrace them all and give them hugs and we don't kiss on the cheek or anything, but we definitely give hugs and, you know, how are you? So when I first did that, when when um, my cousin's mom came over from Thailand, she didn't know what to do. She was like, oh. I gave her a hug and I was like, oh, oh, how are you? Whatever. She didn't know what I was talking about, obviously. Um, but I gave her a hug and she literally went like this. 
And she was like so in shock and didn't know what to do because normally in Thailand, when you greet somebody, you greet them and you say, Sawadika. And, and everybody, you know, does the same thing. I don't even do that to my own Thai family, to be honest. And I don't do it to anybody in the Thai community. It was just because I just, I don't know, my mom, you know, she encouraged it. But as an adult, um, I'm not with the Thai community too much because I'm with my own family. Um, so it's just lots of different things. So anyway, um, I'm 20 minutes in, I need to shut up. So anyway, so that was what I got out of um, so far in the first two chapters of Communication Works, Oral Communications. So um, I don't know. So that was kind of like, I don't know, what, what do you want to call that? Lesson number one, how to communicate properly for different cultures around the world. Make sure you know what you're saying, what you're doing. Don't point. It's not nice to point. That was another thing my dad always said. If you wanted to talk to somebody, you couldn't just be like, oh, that person over there, or that person over there. I'd be like, don't point. That's not nice to point. You don't do that. <laughs> Is that um, considered accurate across all cultures? I don't know. I just know in my household, if you pointed, you got in really big trouble. Like you would get like a knuckle to the skull. My dad, that was my dad's thing. He would be like, bah! you did something wrong. You would never know until you got the knuckle across the head. Be like, I'm like, oh, I damn. <laughs> anyway, um, I guess that's it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And um, if you like this, let me know. Um, since the weekly mail is very slim to none, I can talk about any other classes. I can just talk about whatever. I thought it was interesting to learn about different cultures. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. So, all right. I will see you again in another video. Bye.